hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today, we're gonna to be working on this truck camper lifting system. Um, let me just let you listen to what it's doing. When we crank this thing, listen to this. Wake up the whole neighborhood, and we're gonna come down with it. Okay, so it doesn't take a genius to figure out there's something wrong here. Um, now, this system, it's different than what you'd find on a pop-up camper. Um, this system is by Intech Solutions Incorporated in Elkhart, Indiana. You're not going to find any information at all on the internet, on the web, the company, nothing. And so, um, because of that, I decided, well, Darren, you're an engineer for three decades. You should be able to figure this out. And so I started to go in and, and systematically take things out like, okay, screw five to quadrant three. And um, it started to unravel itself and, and reveal all the secrets behind the curtain on how these things work. And so um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring you along. We're gonna take this whole assembly apart. We're gonna grease it. And uh, the way these things work, um, the best analogy I could come up with probably would be like, remember the old 10-speed bicycles, you know, that shift lever? Even the not modern day bicycles, they have that shift lever. And you move that shift lever and it's the, the little wire is going through a, a jacket, okay? And it's going around and it's activating your um, derailleur. So when you go forward, the derailleur goes one way. When you go the other way, the derailleur goes the other way. Even though that jacket is twisting and turning and coiling around, it's still a one-to-one -one relationship, okay? So here we have the operating mechanism and then it goes through these little curves. These little tubes are very important. They are the jacket, okay? Inside of this, you've got like a tightly wound spring coil, very tightly wound. And as it's pushing or pulling, it can actually navigate these turns in the conduit here. And uh, so basically that's, the, that's, that's how it's working, okay? In here, you have some Acme screws that are working opposite each other. There's a gear at this end, which we're gonna be taking this apart to show you. So as we're cranking, we're turning these Acme screws and these little shuttles are actually moving the, the, the spring coil cable up and down. And because it's all doing it together, you have perfect synchronization as you lift and lower, okay? Same principle on a um, pop-up type camper, but I've just never worked on one of these types of systems. A pop-up camper is a little bit simpler compared to this thing. And um, so, I figured it would add value to, to dig into this thing and start playing around with it. And so I'm going to set you guys up. Let me bring you closer so you can get a, a picture of what we're dealing with here. Um, this truck camper, it's a uh, StarCraft Pine Mountain. It's a 2006. Um, so uh, this thing's never had any maintenance done to it. Okay. So basically it needs to be lubricated. It needs to be cleaned up and lubricated. And then we're going to find out if we graduate today by making this thing nice and quiet and operating without all those cranky sounds. So I'm going to bring you in. You're going to take a look at this thing and then I'm going to set you up and I'll demonstrate disassembling it, pulling out the thing. It's kind of like fighting. It's, it's like wrestling an octopus and you'll see what I mean when we start taking this thing apart. So let me show you what we're dealing with here. Company name. Okay. And uh, could not find any information on the internet Intech Solutions Incorporated is a IT type company, um, certainly not making lift mechanisms. So uh, if we follow through here, you'll see that one of them goes up, 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 up. And if we come out here, you'll see where those little screw holes are on the inside, okay? So there's the magic there. The other one, I've already taken this bracket off. It's on the deck there. And then here we have this other bracket there was one right there just like it, but I've already taken him off. And then he goes up and then matching with him is another bracket on the inside, okay? So just for completeness, I will take you on the inside, show you what the inside looks like, then we'll go to the front and disassemble. Here we are on the inside. So when you begin to see the octopus tentacle is what I'm gonna call it, it's gonna be coming up and pushing inside of this tube. And then the, on the outside, there's the screws. Okay, so there's going to be four mechanisms like this, one on each corner. If you're going to be doing this yourself, the first step is going to be to block up the roof. Now, you don't need to crank up the roof and lower it down on those two by fours there. You should just be able to lift up the roof. They're not that heavy. So each corner is going to have a two by four just to take the pressure off of the lifting mechanism. 
by taking the weight off the roof on the blocks of wood, we, we've now got all the weight off of this. So when we take this apart, you don't have the roof pushing against you. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start taking out these two screws right here on both sides. Okay. And there's going to be a Phillips screw. Actually, it's a number. It's a square. So we're going to let's just start here. Okay. We're going to take this screw out right here. We're going to take these two screws out right here. And we're going to pull this tube loose and you'll see one of the octopus tentacles come free. Uh, put on some gloves. Okay. Okay, one screw's loose. Okay, so I've taken three screws loose. This should pop out. Okay, there we go. So three screws, this thing came out. And I'm gonna pull this octopus leg out. Okay. So this was on with these two screws here, holding them in this orientation. So I'm going to set this right over here. Actually, you know what? I've got a better idea. I'm going to hook him here. You, know, it, it's, you can't get them confused, but here is this spring coil I was talking about. It's easy to flex, but as this guy is pushing, um, you'll see him moving, moving in and out. Okay. And so now I'll take this guy loose, all right? One screw here should do it. So just like on the top, there's a screw on the bottom. And while I got this tool in my hand, I'll go ahead and do these as well. Now this one, this is, remember that bracket I told you I took out? You take that bracket out? So I'm going to pull this guy a little bit. Okay. Okay, here's the other octopus leg. Leaving this here. Okay. Uh, let's take the other side apart. We already got these screws loose, so now we're going to take these off. Well, on this side, this cranky handle is kind of in my way, so let's adjust the sails as we go here. That's just the last one. Okay. So now we have our octopus tentacles. Now you understand why I was saying wrestling an octopus. So each side's got four, or each side has two. You got two short ones and two long ones. Obviously the long ones go to the rear, the short ones come to the front. So at this point, we're just down to this piece right here, okay? So now I'm gonna take these two pieces off. I will take this with me. And I think what we might do is go set us up over there where we can actually have a little bit more space. Okay, so I've moved your perspective over there. I'm gonna take this off and I brought some sawhorses and some two by sixes. We'll just do the work right here. So let me take this off. So now the body is off 
and then I'll change you guys around so you can see. I'm going to put some rubber gloves on because we're about to get greasy. That's why you're, if you've watched, we've got over 100 videos out, and I'm always in this khaki-colored shirt. They're like, well, Darren, you're out of uniform. This is my uniform of the day, guys, uh, because I knew it was going to potentially get greasy, so this is one of my older uniform shirts. So that's what's up with that. So I'm going to change gloves, change your perspective to show you what we're dealing with here. So here we have, I will call this the octopus just because we're having fun with that. Um, if we go down this way, you'll see his tentacles. And um, so we'll come down this way. And all that creaky sound you heard was all that rust. You see this, this tentacle, very, very rusty. So what we're going to do is clean it up, lubricate it, put it all back together again. But if he's rusty there, there's a possibility. Let's go inside of this thing and see how he works. Um, and while we're going to be greasing stuff, let's grease that as well. All right, here's your point of caution. If you go inside of this thing, you avoid the warranty. Okay, seriously. Um, but the company, I, if, if this company is still in business, they are doing a very excellent job of hiding themselves. So if you're with this company and you make these things still today, please let us know how to find you because I couldn't find it. But when I took it apart, there was a sticker over here that said void if taken off. And I'm like, okay, well, so great. Let's void some warranties. All right. So let's start disassemble. Disassemble Stephanie. So we're going to use that. Uh, how about a magnetic tray? So here's some things I've discovered. Here, let's just take it apart. I've already been into this thing once. Boarding warranties is fun. I've taken a few minutes to clamp this thing down. Um, it, it took two pipe clamps. This is the end opposite the crank handle. And so you see that spur gear there. There's another one below it. That's spur gears at the end of that Acme screw. And then you'll see another Acme screw below it. And um, so that's what that Acme screw is. There, I got a flashlight. That Acme screw is um, bottomed out into that brass collet thing right there. So then we come down here. And there is another mechanism in there that allows it to uh, stay up when it latches. But then when you turn it the other way, it loosens itself. Uh, maybe we'll get a better view of that. And so what I've done is I've gone ahead and put this crank handle on it. And I figure if you've come this far, it's probably because you might have this problem as well. And uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to set up the camera on a tripod since I'm here by myself. And um, we'll just do a couple uh, action shots of the thing working. And uh, you'll get a better understanding of how these things work so you can fix yours. So for your first action shot, um, I'm going to turn this. This Okay, I'm going to turn it this way. And you'll see the octopus tentacles extending out. Okay. On my end, they're also extending out. Mine are attached to this shuttle. Yours are attached to the one down below. Okay. And so as this thing's turning, get two hands on it. You see how it's pushing. Okay. Now that we've got them opened up a little bit, I can see in there a little bit better. So um, those two Acme screws are turning opposite each other because of that gear. And then right there on that little octopus tentacle, he's got a little bit of rust. If I can get the... There he is. And, and that's what we're going to be addressing. And... Uh, I'll turn this side. And so here, you'll see the tentacle coming out. And I'll go the other way. Now here, here's something, see I'm going this way and you hear that clicky sound? That's two things, that's this little ratchet inside of here so that as your roof is going up, it won't fall back down again. Then so I have to turn this, see I'm turning it, turning it, turning. I'm gonna release that ratchet. Now everybody's gonna go back inside. And um, let me give you this one more shot. So here you can watch the two shuttles as they, Actually, I want to go this way. So the lower shuttle's coming my way, the upper shuttle's going away. And this would be the lowering position. Okay, so now we're all the way bottom down. Okay, enough on that. Let's uh, start cleaning and degreasing. But since we've come this far, I figured, well, hey, let's take some time and kind of play with this thing a little bit. 
and see how it really works so we can really understand it. Uh, I'm going to hit it with some degreaser and start working these uh, rusty spots out. Then I've got, oh, well, let's take this. Take, there's one more thing to show you while we're here. Uh, let me move you back a little bit and we'll set you up on that. So I've moved you up there. Let me take these things off. I want to show you, I'm just going to drop this right there. We're done with the pipe clamps. Had I not had the pipe clamps on, this thing would have come apart. So I'm going to take this part of this side apart again. Now that we understand a little bit more, make sure my washers are still intact. Okay, we take this off. Okay, I'm going to take this and put it on my cart behind me. And now we'll take this plastic off because I hadn't done that yet. So here we have just a plastic extrusion, okay? And um, this is the part that this shuttle rides in. And if we look, let's take this one off as well. He's a little bit longer. Okay. And uh, so now if we look, hopefully you can see this this is the business end. This is the side that's going to have the nut on it. That nut is driven into the spring coil. Okay, this is your anchor point. The other end of this spring is the one that's doing all the pushing. And it's also the ones that's very rusted. Um, if you ever have to, if you ever have one that's broken that you have to replace, make sure it's the same length. Diameter, same diameter, same length. It's kind of important. Um, so here we have Acme screw with the gear on the end. That's working against this gear making him turn the opposite direction. And so to fix this thing, we, our springs are fine. We don't need to replace one. He is a little fatigued right here, it looks like. But if we just kind of work this back and forth a little bit with some degreaser, maybe an, an iron brush, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm, you're not going to be watching me do that. I'm going to take some foaming degreaser and let it foam this up, take a, a wire brush, clean this up really well, all the way down, all of them. That'll clean everybody. And then I'm going to start putting some grease back on it. And then we'll reassemble. And um, we'll find out, like I said, if we graduate today by putting all together and seeing if it's quiet now. So with that, let me get some work done. I've kind of covered a lot of tips and tricks with you, how these things work, how to take them apart. What I'm going to do now, clean this up. And then when we come back, that's where I'm going to be applying the grease. Because all I'm going to do now is hit some spraying foam, uh, which I have right here. And just let that foam kind of work, work its way in like that and then a, a wire scraping brush which i need to go get and i'm going to basically be opening this up a little bit get the foam in there and um i'm not going to want to have to do this again for another couple of years so let's get it right the first time right so we're going to just really degrease this all right yay okay so darren's got to get some work done i'll catch up with you guys the magic of film editing uh sprinkle some pixie dust on this and it'll be ready. So let's get this done. I brought you over here because I wanted to show you something. I've made a discovery. It turns out that when I took this piece here away and did all my cleaning and everything, I never disassembled any of this part down here. And so when I first brought it over, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put some match marks on this thing. And I notched two notches here for L and two down here for short, thinking that's what I needed to do based on what we just found out. But it turns out that this top um, cable, I'm going to call it a cable. He's the short one over here. I, in my notes, I made him long just now. And now I'm realizing like, no, wait a minute. I never took this thing apart. So it should always be short. So in my confusion, I actually went back and, and looked at the very, very opening video where I was saying, Hey guys. And I realized that the top on both of these are short and the bottom on both of these are long. So what I need to do is not turn the whole assembly over, but just turn over the bottom shuttle so that it makes it so that the short ones are on the top and the long ones at the bottom. That's all we need to do. And um, so for you, make sure that you look at how yours is. We've got it all put back together again. And I even went so far as to feed all of the tentacles back into the conduit, um, into the tubes. Um, I have not put that, it's, it's right down there, that little plate 
Um, he goes up there. I'll squat under there and put that up together. I have since taken some butyl tape and put it back behind this plate right here, screwed all this in. There's still a little bit of um, the grease that I need to clean up. I figured if you guys have been with me this long, we will discover together if the cranking is going to make the squeaky sound or not. So um, it's a moment of truth. Let's jump in. And um, I'm kind of optimistic, but... I am also a little nervous, so uh, let's let's crank it and see what happens. So I'm gonna be over here cranking and you'll just listen. <clears throat> okay, we've got a crank handle here. <clears throat> here we go. Oh, I put all new screws in here. Um, the screws that were here were all rusted, so I put in some brand new screws. I went with one gauge bigger so they get to grab this aluminum. The aluminum was getting fatigued. Uh, so all these are new screws in here. Here we go. <sighs> The clicking is a ratcheting in here. So so far, I'm, 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 I'm happy. No movement yet. Okay, it's got a little hard. There's a block. There's another block. They're both falling out the back. Oh, guys, I'm happy. So it's not making the terrible squeaky sound. Let's go all the way up with it. Hey, that was pretty cool. Uh, let me lower it down and I I'm sure it's gonna be fine, but I'll lower it down just to see. And one thing we've learned is when we lower it down, it's gonna turn a few times to loosen up that ratchet before it actually starts coming down. Here it comes. Well, cool. That was exciting. <clears throat> Long video. Uh, lessons learned. Um, I like this system. I don't know anything about this company. I have no idea. I think what they did was they put together a really great product. Um, hopefully, they're still out there making this thing because um, now that I've been in it as many times as I have, I think it's a really good mechanism that they've come up with. This thing's at 06. It's still running strong. It just needed some, some uh, attention. It needs some service, as everything does. If I were to make one, I might put some Zerk fittings on it so you can grease it uh, because there's no Zerk fittings on any of this. Um, it's like when it leaves a factory and it's all greased and new, it's great, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, but in, I don't know, 10, uh, I'm not doing math. I'm not, Yes, I'm very good at math, thank you very much, but I'm not doing it in front of you. Uh, thank you. Um, number of years, it, the, the grease is gonna dry out, it's gonna get creaky, and you saw that rust, so, um, Make it more serviceable is what I would think. But um, it wasn't that big of a deal to take it apart, put it back together. The challenge is making sure which pieces go where. Uh, you saw me have to do that a several, couple several times. So just slow down, be slow, be careful, slow as smooth, smooth as fast. I like the little match mark, notch mark thing. Uh, this little guy right here, you just kind of punch, uh, make some marks on it so that you know how things go back together again. Um, <clears throat> At the end, it was very, very easy to do a service. Um, honestly, I think we could probably do this in about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, it's taken me a minute much longer because I've been taking it apart and putting it back together several times. And you've kind of been along with the journey too. But now that if I had to do another one, I could probably be in and out of the thing in about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. <clears throat> I have no idea what the book rate pays on these things. Um, but just saying, it, it's not a big all day deal. So watch what I've done, learn from it, and yours will go faster too. We're at the end, guys. If this was helpful, give me a thumb up. I really appreciate that. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, we've got a Patreon. You could subscribe to that. And uh, that helps to, you know, fund the effort. Because when I make these videos, it takes me two, sometimes three, four times longer to make a video than going out there working on service calls. I am still a working man in the field. I'm still an RV technician owning my RV works. We still do mobile RV service calls on the Northern Olympic Peninsula. That's my day job. That's my day gig. And... Um, <clears throat> This one we knew was going to take some time, so I blocked out the entire day just to get this done because I wanted to understand it myself, and I wanted to bring you guys along with me as we go through it together because I could not find any information on this system just at all. I couldn't. And um, so we went through it together, and you saw we had to do it a couple times, but now it's working great. So um, happy campers say Meyer Works. And so until the next time, this is Darren with Meyer Works.
in Joyce, Washington. Until the next video, thank you for watching.